Hey guys, some time ago I uploaded a video on how to do top probe soldering. I updated my system. First system was kind of super redundant because I was experimenting and couldn't find any information on the uh, devices I used. What I do now uh, is a bit different from previous video. I removed the prusy cords on top of the ascenders because I now trust the ascenders and I know they work. But sometimes I still have the redundant descender below the others. Yeah, if I want extra safety. A new and simpler setup is the Ropeman 2, two times, because I'm using a half rope and I want to be redundant with the rope because when you're doing top roping and the rope is somewhere on the edge and you go up the rope moves a lot and this just gives me extra redundancy and also when I'm doing ice climbing or climbing in the mountains I also work with two ropes so I need a setup for two ropes yeah that's the setup I'm using a three lock steel carabiner so it's extra strong it doesn't twist because it has got, has got this security snap down here. I also attached the Petzl uh, Tanga, I think. They prevent the rope man from sliding down here. So they can only slide this much. The cool thing about the rope man is when it's weightened, because the rope is elastic, it slides up to this position automatically. I had some issues with the climbing technology roll and lock I used before. The problem with the climbing technology ascenders have been that they are kind of wide where they are attached and then when they are weighted they do a, some kind of pivoting so it's not that good for a carabiner. Now I want to show you how I set up this device on the rope crucial for this to work is you need weight on the bottom of the rope. I usually attach this with a prusik so when I'm on the rope I can slide the prusik up so it makes it easy to set it up and when it's only that light I can still rappel off quite easy. Rope man 2, especially if you use 2, there's more friction so you can see the weight of one liter of water, two boots and a bottle is slightly enough to pull the rope down. This is how it works. I already built an anchor on top, so I have my rope attached with the weight on the lower end of the rope. Now I attach my two Ropeman 2s to the rope and then into my steel carabiner which is attached to my belay loop of my harness. I stretch the rope to get some of the dynamic stretch out and then I adjust the height of the weight. Thanks to the weight, in most cases, the rope slides through the ascenders automatically. Only in some cases you have to watch out and slide them up by hand. This is because the rope can get stuck or the weight places itself on some flat area. When you use too heavy weight on the rope, you cannot move to the sides, so it makes it harder to climb. When you are on the top, you can secure yourself with a daisy chain or two extenders. Then you can remove the ascenders, just make sure not to lose them. And then you can attach them back to your steel carabiner. Now it's time for the prusik since I want to rappel down. So I attach a prusik to the rope. Now give me some rope, so it's easier to insert the rope to the REPL device. Now I tighten the rope and the prusik, so my weight is already on the REPL device and then I can REPL down to the bottom of the climb. At the bottom I get out of the system and when it's cold you can warm your hands on the hot or warm REPL device and carabiner. I had a lot of comments on my video to my previous setup. 
Yes, those ascenders are not made to catch a big fall. But in normal use, the maximum fall is double the length of the carabiner and double the length of your gear loop. And that's normally the maximum. In bad cases, when the rope gets stuck under some overhang, you just have to watch out that this doesn't that this doesn't happen. So just have to be aware of the rope and where it hangs and where it goes. I had some issues with the climbing technology roll and lock I used before. This one doesn't have teeth. It was a bit less bad for the rope, but the teeth of the Ropeman 2 are also not that sharp. On Petzl Ascenders they are much sharper. So this is still okay. And these Ropeman with teeth catch to the rope even when it's dirty or when it's iced. So that's quite okay. And this setup is simple, but a bit heavier because of the steel carabiner. The other cool thing about the climbing technology roll lock was it hasn't got teeth, so it was easy to lower them. When you're a bit up and you want to give some slack to start like 10 centimeters further from below, it was easy to release because you just had to get out some tension and it can slide it down because it hasn't got teeth, it only has got like edges. And with the rope man it's not that easy, it has got this, but what I prefer is just grab it from underneath and then slide it down. But you have to think or you have to be aware of, now you're not safe anymore because when you fall you would slide down, you would have to release your hand. The thing is, when you're using a Cree Cree, it doesn't slide up automatically. So you have to take in slack all the time. And Cree Cree also doesn't work with thin ropes like this and not with twin, uh, twin ropes or half ropes. So that only works with one strand of rope and I use two. So Cree Cree, yeah, not, not really good for my personal purpose. People also ask me why I don't use mitlaufende Sicherungsgerät. Uh, Sorry, I don't know the word in English. It's mainly used by industrial climbers to uh, have redundancy. So it's a device that slides up and down, but in the case of a fall, it stops like the Petzl ASAP, I think. Yeah, I don't use this because they, in most cases, start from 10 millimeters and are some, some of them are made for static ropes only. And what I use, is in this case the 7.9 millimeter climbing rope so it's dynamic and it's thin so those other devices will not work even some cool ascenders i would like to try doesn't work or don't work with thin ropes like this i also have seen people using the petzl shunt but the petzl shunt is only one device with one uh, arm that catches the rope, so it's not re really redundant, because if it's on only one rope, or if even if you catch it or hold on it, it would slide down. So for me personally, I don't really like the shunt. So yeah, thanks for watching, that's it, and have a nice day, climb safe, see you next time, bye.